So uh, you see that uh, in the 21st century, work-life balance has been on the agenda of policymakers for uh, several years. But some of the industries, some of the sectors are known to have very draconian uh, work-life hours, especially one particular sector is investment banks, which is notorious for people working for several days in a row, continuously for 120 hours um, in a week or something of that sort. To the tragic end uh, that there was a situation in October 2013 where an intern working at one of these investment banks died of an epilep epileptic shock uh, sort of uh, after working three days continuously. In the wake of this uh, news, a lot of investment banks implemented something called a protected weekend policy. It was basically to provide junior bankers time away from office. Basically, it imposed certain restrictions on them working over the weekends. And a number of banks followed suit and there were seven banks, major banks, the, some of the largest investment banks implemented these policies in varying capacities. But primarily, they were uh, trying to restrict the junior bankers to come and work at their buildings, new, uh, that is, office buildings in, uh, uh, in New York, essentially. So uh, although this was applied worldwide, we study the New York geography, yes. I think this is where the innovation of our paper is because even though the banks implement protected weekend policy, uh, the issue is that it is impossible for a researchers to directly access the banking registers to get the timing punch, punch in, punch out time. So what we do is we do a, a proxy for it. We study the taxi rides. So uh, one good thing that happened meanwhile is that the New York uh, City released a lot of data about their uh, cities. Uh, uh, all the data they have collected about the city, including taxi rides, which includes the timestamp of the taxi, where it was, from where it was taken, where it is going. And they had released it in much detail uh, earlier, around 2016. So we came across this data. So what we do essentially is we look at, ta there are basically 1.1 billion data points there, okay, uh, growing each, each month. Uh, but uh, what we look at is, we look at 16 million taxi rides, which start from a banking headquarter, 10 of these locations, 10 banks, and uh, uh, out of them, seven implemented the policies, three refused to implement the policy. They were like, we are okay. So we study taxi rides taken from each of this headquarter location in New York, and the taxi goes into a residential location. So we are somewhat sure that this taxi is taken by a banker to go home. So, and from that, we infer the hours at which the taxi rides are taken, and from that, we infer the working hours of bankers. That is the primary uh, data set here. So uh, this is what we find. The main primary finding is that analyzing the taxi rides for hours, we find that the number of taxi rides being taken from bank location to residential addresses on Saturdays go, goes down. But what really happens as an effect of this is bankers start taking late night hour taxis on weekdays. So essentially the work has essentially been transferred from Saturday to late night, very, very late night from let's say up until 2 a.m. in the morning uh, on weekdays. So there is a transfer of work from weekends to weekdays. That is what our one of our primary uh, finding using the taxi data is. This is the second leg of our research, which, uh, so we find that, okay, there is a transference of work from weekends to weekdays, uh, late night hours on weekdays. But if you expect somebody to work, let's say, very, very long hours on weekdays, then you expect them to make more mistakes. You expect them to sort of have a poorer quality of work. And this is what exactly we find. We analyze a specific aspect of a banker's uh, performance, which is called analyst uh, projections. So bankers or analysts working in an investment bank, they tend to make projections about stock valuations and they give analyst reports. So we find that the errors in those reports goes up after the um, 
policy was implemented, so especially for these policy banks, as in the error rate has increased. So we infer that actually the quality of work, uh, quality of work generated because they are working very long hours has come down compared to those banks which have not implemented this policy per se. Uh, what we essentially draw conclusion uh, based on our conclusions what one can say is that uh, it is not easy to just uh, create a policy uh, or decree a policy in a in a place like investment bank where the incentives are tied and incentives are very high so one has to create a policy uh, of let's say working our ba uh, work life balance working hour based policies Considering several factors, one of the factors is the incentives, as in the pay bonuses, etc., also into play. Uh, for example, uh, let me give you one of the reasons why an investment banker might want to stay longer is that he want to hint. Especially, we also one more thing we find is that junior bankers are particularly affected by the policy, both in terms of work as well as in terms of the quality of work, uh, the inexperienced ones. So what essentially it draws, uh, uh, tells us is that you just cannot decree a policy. You have to think about several aspects of the sector. These sectors are governed by incentives, which are like high bonuses, high competition, uh, like uh, high testosterone, one might even say, uh, levels of competition that goes in there. So one, if one designs a work-life balance, one has to consider how, to, how that also aligns with the incentive structure. Uh, along with uh, understanding their employees' work-life balance in general, instead of like simply saying don't come to work, because what essentially will happen is people will shift the work and it might result in like poorer quality of output as well.